Well, I've uh, gone out and got the wallet out and broken the bank on this one. Going all posh, and I bought myself a second hand windlass, which is going to pull my anchor in on the new boat. So, just going to do a short video on how I'm going to install it, really. Going to be a bit of a working out how I'm going to do it myself, but uh, should be simple enough. First job, though, get the old brasso out and give it a good polish up because you can see the salt on there. She needs a bit of love. Quite lovely. Just do that for the whole whole thing. It'll shine up a beauty. A couple of things you gotta check. Make sure you've got enough drop from your underneath your deck into your anchor well. I reckon this boat's probably got close to a meter, so that's perfect for that. And it's got a nice long nose there. And it's gotta be as far back in on the deck as possible, a nice solid bit of deck, um, far back as you can, so you've got the biggest drop, and you've got to make sure that it's nice and straight, so we've just drawn this on with a template from the gasket that's going to sandwich up from the other side of the deck, and then we're going to have to change that bow roller at the end to, uh, to that one over there, which is a, a hinged bow roller, or as Gavin's just called it, a self-launching bow roller, because that bit there just drops forward as you release it. But we'll have to modify that a little bit to fit on the front of this boat because it's a bit of a funny nose. Like huh? Not funny nose. Are you, are you happy for me? I'm happy, Gavin. You go, 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 oh, you mate. You want me to drill? Why, why do you always get me to drill the holes in your boat? <laughs> you? Every single hole you've been like, Gav, you want to come help me do it? No, I always have to drill all the holes. I don't want to drill a hole in my own boat, do I? Well, that's scary stuff. Take the uh, shiny, shiny cleat. Bye. Right, I'm off, mate. I'll see you later. Put the cleat here as well, so obviously we can use that with the windlass, and then doesn't have the pressure on the motor. Happy days. Off. Here's the uh, slight problem with the bow roller. As I said, it's not a hinged one, so you can't actually launch with a windlass off that. And actually, it's pretty rubbish anyway, because there's not enough drop on there to actually hold a chain on there. Sorry. So it'll all change all of that. This is going to be the thinner part here, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, that's going to, and it's going to have that little lip underneath. That'll go. Right, we'll just get this bit out. Yes. Lovely old job. That's all right, it's still there. Not a very thick deck, is it? Not as thick as the Alaska. Was the Alaska thick? Yeah, thicker than that. Thicker than that. Thicker than that. <laughs> in the front deck and realize it's not going to be actually as strong as it could be so made up a I say me Gavin made up a beautiful little bracket out of this rhino board fit to the shapes of the boat so that's a bit of a scruffy old do but it's perfectly fits into that gap up there and that's going to sandwich against the deck so that the winch is going to pull on that board not on this sort of soft flexible not very thick, but obviously it is strong. It's deck, so it is strong. But that's just going to give that windlass loads of strength. 
and then we've got the, the deck cleat here just off to the side so when it's there we can just hook the anchor onto there rather than having it on the on the motor and we're going to fill any void in there with some some sticky foam so we know no gaps and then sicker flex around the outside and she'll be she'll be golden good to go let's get it stuck in there <laughs> there's gav with his strawberry blancmange <laughs> And we've got a sick flex as a little gasket on here. Gonna press it all together. And if I had more hands, I'd show you how it's done. But that's essentially what it's gonna look like. And I'm gonna fill that little gap up with some foam as well. It's solid as a rock. Right, well, wake up in the morning and this is what we're left with. Thank you very much, Gavin. Top job, he's made a, a bracket that gets a lot more strength from the, the front of the boat and pinned it to that and at the front obviously you can see there mind the mucky window but it's nicely sealed on there with sicker flex now my next job these are the two wires the positive and the negative coming down from the windlass so i'm gonna have to wire those in um, I'm just going to wire them in to test it all and make sure it all works first before I start cutting holes. But I've got a very posh three-way windlass switch with a very nice red LED to show in operation. I've got a 300, I think, 300 amp winch solenoid. And I've got a nice big thick bit of cable there that's going to run from the straight from the battery to the solenoid. But I'm going to Gonna get all those uh, sort of wired up first, give it a test, make sure everything works before doing anything, soldering or connecting anything up properly. Um, and certainly before I drill any holes for switches and stuff. So I'm gonna crack on with that. Okay, so I've just wired this up really simply and it is very, very easy. So you'll have to pause the video if you're doing this for yourself to make this a bit easier. But essentially I've got my positive, my negative, at either end of my solenoid then I've run my power which is my big twin core um, wire I've run wrong colors I know but I've just done it to mock it up but so I've got my brown one there is my positive main feed that goes directly to my battery that is going to be going via uh, an isolation switch when I do it proper I've got my negative that's the blue wire goes off into the twin core that goes straight to the negative of the battery so it's hardwired to the battery, isolation switch on the positive. Uh, just go for that again. I've got so the, the black one goes straight off to the windlass. The red one goes straight off to the windlass. And I've got a little earth here that was, came with my uh, solenoid. So that was attached to this little spade connector and that goes to the um, battery negative on that side. Just roll that over. You've got the three spades here. So you've got the negative one that I've just spoken about. You've got this orange one that then comes to my switch. The back of the switch, you've got four spades, okay? So the front, that's the front of the switch. Up is here, so up is here. So the orange one that is attached to that top spade goes to that one on the solenoid. You've got this little one that just turns back on itself to the LED. You've got this orange one, which comes off the central, and that one comes back and gets its feed from that main feed on the solenoid. And then you've got the down, which is that one there. That one feeds off and goes to that spade connector at the bottom of the solenoid. Easy peasy. And you can hear there, press the button, up, down, and that's uh, been a really, really simple process actually. I know Gavin's done all the install and actually getting all the hardware uh, onto the front of the boat, so thank you very much Gavin from Cheapskate Boat, boat Fishing. Um, but the actual process of doing the wiring, really simple. Um, I mean, I've only just rudimentary knocked it together just to make sure it was all working and test the actual winch itself and make sure you know I knew what I was doing and um, so now it's just a case of smiling it all up putting an isolator switch in there and uh, trying to work out exactly where I'm going to put my 
my windlass switch, which I reckon, um, I'm about to put a new VHF in here somewhere as well. So I reckon my switch is gonna go possibly here or here so that I can open this window up and uh, then I can actually tie it, tie the windlass off onto that cleat there when I'm anchored just to take the, uh, the pressure off the motor. But really happy with how that's turned out. I'll get this one tidied up and then uh, on to the next little project, which I think is the uh, fit in the VHF. Wish me luck.